Aloha. I want to share with you some thoughts on <clears throat> the pitfalls along the hero's journey. Uh, the first first step being about the sensorium, uh, being being present here and now. Well, the, the major pitfall here is stress. Stress kills awareness. So any kind of stress. Uh, as uh, psychologist B.I. Shipman stated in, back in the 1950s, uh, that under stress we see less, we hear less, we remember less, and we become generally less efficient. Our, our perceptual fields constrict. So if we, it's the opposite of growth, the opposite of spiritual growth is stress. It kills, kills us right at, at the root. Number two, <clears throat> at the top of the heart, <clears throat> wanting prevents having. If we're wanting something, we can't even experience if we do have it. Uh, if I'm wanting to find my keys, I can't have the sensation that they're in my hand. <laughs> and we've probably all experienced that. So wanting prevents having grace, receiving grace. At the bottom of the heart, attachment substitutes for engagement and nullifies focus. Focus happens at the bottom of the heart. Uh, the, the concentration of attention, attention is the top of the heart, focus at the bottom. And so when we're attached, it's, it's the energy is flowing the wrong direction. We can't be here now. We can't be in gratitude. We can't be nourished by that flow of grace into our, our vessel, filling our vessel. Uh, so <clears throat> that just Again, sends us the wrong direction, stops us, slows us down. Now, thinking. Step four. One of the problems with thought is that thought thinks that it's the only form of consciousness, so it thinks it's all alone. As you know, it tends to want to be in control, try to be in control, and yet it's a linear process in a world that's nonlinear, in a world that's even transcendental beyond non nonlinear. It's transcendental. It's all of those simultaneously. So thinking is a problem because <laughs> it can be li limiting thoughts, limiting beliefs, etc. Fifth, we get into action, but action by itself, well, it can be addictive. You know, adrenals and kidney are, are the, the organs associated with this area, the third chakra in our model, uh, and <clears throat> you know, the water element in oriental medicine. And uh, Adrenal, we probably all know someone or maybe have experienced you know, the adrenal rush uh, type of addiction. That, you know, action, but again, by action by itself does not, does not bring about the change, the ultimate change that we're looking for. It's a step along the way. If we don't take action, we also don't move forward. So it's a combination of that action, you know, a balance of the will, of the ego will, the, the will to move forward, the will to take action and, and try to control with allowing the divine will to control us for that balance that gives us uh, transcendent regulation. Which leads us to step six, wisdom. And wisdom can seem like an ending, enticing ending point. Uh, rather than what it really is, a refreshing waypoint, because wisdom doesn't stop by saying, I'm wise. Wisdom doesn't say, I'm wise. I don't have to learn. I don't have to be open. I don't have to be nice to people. <laughs> uh, no, wisdom says, I'm humble. I'm, I'm humbled by, my wisdom humbles me. That My awareness of what I've learned humbles me. I see my smallness. I see the greatness of all that is, and at the same time, I see the greatness of what I've been given, and, and the responsibility, feel the responsibility to share that. That's wisdom that keeps us moving. But again, it can seem like an enticing endpoint uh, for the ego. Uh, and then we move into the social realm, and worldly worldly temptations appear very compelling, and they can be overwhelmingly so. Uh, you know, why did Christ say that it's harder for a, a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than uh, for a camel to go through you know, the doorway in, his, in, in, in Jerusalem that was too narrow for a camel to, to go through. You had to, and still there today, you have to walk through one person at a time. It's like a security gate. And uh, so harder for a, person, a rich man to enter heaven, which is at hand, it's right here, but we can't enter it if we can't 
have others as self in this social realm, that we, we treat others as we would treat ourselves. You know, basic golden rule. Uh, so uh, then we have the fully transcendent, the divine transcendent. Uh, contact with the divine seems, again, like a perfect endpoint. It's the perfect escape from the, the suffering of, of the limitation of being here now and of, of suffering of past damage, suffering of, of present you know, I- iniquities that we see, that we, that we experience so strongly, you know, feel in our heart, like, uh, you know, scripture that always says Mary held all these things in her heart. Oh, yeah, it's hard. We feel, we feel, we feel. And uh, so, but we don't escape. We bring the divine back present. We bring it here. Now we are God's eyes. We are God's heart. We are God's hands. So we bring the divine present. Uh, Then we have the death of the ego self. And that's, you know, the the completion of our our spaceship. Uh, But that's disorienting. Like, who are we without the ego? That's how we've always known ourselves. And now we're not that. We're not the past. We're, we're who we're becoming. We're our future self. But when we enter that state, we, that's an unfamiliarity, and that's disorienting. And plus, we have to change, reverse direction here. Now we've we've come all this way, and now now the mission is manifest to bring that to others. Uh, and so, we have manifestation of inner coherence. Then feels like there's nothing else to accomplish. But the calling is to bring that to others, to come out of the cave, to come down from the mountain. Yeah. Then, so we re-enter society as a transcendent presence, and and that carries a tremendous charge because we're not blending in, we're not fitting in, we're calling attention to ourselves, we're being different, we're saying, seeing things differently, we're saying things differently. And the next step 12 uh, pitfall is <coughs> receiving essential help from others, other mortals like ourselves, is uh, likely an unfamiliar act for the hero. You know, the hero is used to being out there on their own and, you know, charging <laughs> up the hill. And now we're, you know, like Moses coming humbly down the hill is like, you know, <laughs> he's like aged. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, like Gandalf the White instead of Gandalf the Grey, um, and, and we're kind of like Yoda. He's got a cane. He's like, oh, the old guy needs some help. Has transcendent qualities, so when they're needed, you know, he's he's flipping around, doing doing backflips, and you know, but still, he's just this old guy with a cane. Then we have uh, the next step, formulating and sharing the transformative experience in the limiting form of language, now entering into the form of thought, is a challenge, uh, you know, even to mastery, even to the master, to put into words. Uh, I love the saying of St. Francis that we're always preaching. Sometimes we use words. Then we have the simultaneous integration into close relationship with others and maintenance of the actively heart-centered self is a continuous balancing act. And because there's always challenge in the social sphere, our feelings and emotions and those of others, it's dynamic, it's changing, balancing the unbalanced. We have the pain of moderating the joy of ever-present and superabundant grace with the suffering of the world for lack of acceptance of that grace is a continual sacrifice, continual challenge of bringing the transcendent <coughs> present. <coughs> then we have the overwhelming awareness of the self, of all as self, not just this self, but all selves, without being released from the separation of, of this individuated form, this separate form. So we have that duality of the individuated self and the 
other as self, of divine union with other at the same time. And it's always there. So now these other 16 steps, in step 17, I want to acknowledge that while we're presenting them hierarchically and they appear somewhat hierarchical and, and sequential in, in the, you know, this divine story of, of our growth and development here in the womb of heaven, the truth is that they're not mutually exclusive or strictly se sequential. In fact, the ultimate challenge of gaining our coherence of our future self, our, our ultimate immortal self, is achieving simultaneity in each of these challenges. And so the constant changing pattern of demand on, on these capacities is exactly the prescription we need. Just stay present, stay in your heart, 